There have been four Prime Ministers, two European Commission Presidents and nearly seven years of arguments. But a 25-minute press conference today saw Rishi Sunak hail what he called a decisive breakthrough on Great Britain's trade arrangements with Northern Ireland. The subject, the most intractable problem in the whole of Brexit, has consumed much of the political capital ever since the UK voted to leave the EU. And even now, some unionists are reserving judgment on the new so-called called Windsor Framework until they've had time to pour over it line by line. Yet, at today's announcement, you didn't need to read between the lines to realise what a major step this was. The sight of Rishi Sunak and Ursula von der Leyen standing shoulder to shoulder, with Mrs von der Leyen even calling the PM Dear Rishi, representing a clear thawing in continental relations. As with many things touched by Brexit, the road to an agreement was fraught with risk. But when the Prime Minister met the EU Commission President in Berkshire this morning, the smiles were broad, the deal all but done. I know it hasn't always been easy at times, um, but we have got through it. That, a sentiment every one of his predecessors who tangled with Brexit would have echoed. But by the time the two arrived in Windsor's Guildhall, under the gaze of monarchs past, they hailed a moment of history and a new agreement to address the problems facing Northern Ireland since Brexit. Together, we have changed the original protocol and are today announcing the new Windsor framework. Today's agreement delivers smooth flowing trade within the whole United Kingdom, protects Northern Ireland's place in our union and safeguards sovereignty for the people of Northern Ireland. The Windsor framework attempts to address some of the factors disrupting trade in Northern Ireland. Under the new agreement, most customs checks will be removed for goods heading to Northern Ireland in a new streamlined green lane, whilst there'll be a red lane for goods heading onto the Republic and the EU. The UK will regain the right to set state aid and VAT for Northern Ireland, as in the rest of the UK, and in what's being called the Stormont break, it will also have a veto or emergency break, with the ability to stop new EU laws being applied in the province. The Prime Minister has wrung more concessions out of the EU than previous Prime Ministers managed, the rapport here strikingly warm. We also both knew, dear Rishi, that we could do it. Although this confirmation that the European Court of Justice will still have a role could yet ruffle some feathers. Yes, indeed, the European Court of Justice is the sole and ultimate arbiter of EU law. That's natural because uh, it's prescribed by the EU legal order. So the ECJ will have the final say on EU law and single market issues. As the PM headed to London to sell his deal to Parliament, Ursula von der Leyen set out for tea with the King. Involving the monarch at this delicate moment has also upset some Brexiters and Northern Ireland's Democratic Unionist Party, who made it clear they're reserving judgment on the agreement. It is clear that significant progress has been secured across a number of areas, whilst also recognising that there remain key issues of concern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well there can be no disguising the fact, for example, that in some sectors of our economy in Northern Ireland, EU law remains applicable in our part of the United Kingdom. The ultimate prize is to convince the DUP to rejoin power sharing in Stormont. If they're not committing yet, some key Eurosceptics are convinced this deal is a turning point. Reflecting back over the last five years, that at any point in that time, if this deal had been on the table, those of us who are Brexiteers, those of us who are Remainers, those of us who are Unionists would have jumped on it. And this was the Labour leader's promise. Labour will support the Windsor framework. I hope that in coming days others will come to support the agreement in the same spirit and join Labour in voting to make the protocol work, in voting to face the future in voting for country before party. The man who negotiated the previous agreement, promising Brexit was Boy, done, Johnson, has quick, said quick he too today. will now study the detail. The Late tonight, Rishi Sunak was still <laughs> arguing for his deal in the Commons. He's achieved more than many expected, but to find out whether he can also restore devolved government in Northern Ireland, for that, the DUP is going to make him wait. Romilly Weeks, News at 10.
Well, as a reminder of just how much weight was attached to finding a workable new solution, consider just how much frustration the existing arrangement had attracted from complaints of costly paperwork to the so-called sausage wars of 2021. Joel has been looking at what looks set to be abandoned and how these new proposals might work. So we'll take a deep breath, Joel. The sausage wars look <laughs> like they're over. The Northern <laughs> Ireland Protocol, Julie, was agreed by Boris Johnson's government in an attempt to prevent a hard border on the island of Ireland after Brexit. It left Northern Ireland in the EU's single market for goods and created a customs border in the Irish Sea requiring checks on products crossing from the main British mainland. Now, the protocol has caused huge problems for businesses. Marks and Spencer estimates paperwork and border delays costs it £30 million a year and it upset the Democratic Unionist Party, which pulled out, of course, of the Northern Ireland executive a year ago, threatening not to return unless the protocol was scrapped. The protocol has not been scrapped. It has been renamed and significantly changed. The Windsor framework means goods travelling from Britain to Northern Ireland will now pass through a green channel with no checks at all. Goods bound for Ireland and beyond will go through a red channel with full controls intact. Now, the Prime Minister says these changes remove any sense of a border in the Irish Sea, and this trade expert agrees. I think it shaves it away to nearly nothing as long as, I guess we're lucky, but mostly as long as we try and administer it in a way uh, that involves good sense and goodwill. The EU has made significant concessions. The VAT rules the Chancellor sets in Westminster will now apply in Northern Ireland. Food, drink and medicines should move freely within the United Kingdom again. Yes, it's amazing that they didn't. Pets travelling to Northern Ireland will no longer require health certificates costing £180 a time. But Northern Irish businesses will still have to follow EU rules in areas like dairy and manufactured goods. And the European Court of Justice will retain jurisdiction over EU law in Northern Ireland. The Windsor framework, as you've been hearing, does include a Stormont break, which will allow the Assembly to oppose new EU single market laws if... They have a significant impact on the day-to-day -day lives of businesses and citizens. So there's a process to follow, but the UK veto looks absolute. The EU cannot override it. And the question, Julie, is will it be enough? for the DUP. Indeed, Joel, thank you for that comprehensive explanation. Well, in order to trigger the Stormont break, which Joel uh, just referred to, Stormont itself, of course, would have to get back up and running. Doing so would be welcomed, not least by the US President Joe Biden, who has tonight weighed in with his support for the framework. The Northern Ireland Assembly has not sat in a year since the DUP began a boycott over the protocol on democratic grounds, but plenty of companies had their own reasons to be pushing for change. The Northern Ireland Protocol has been a huge headache for many businesses moving goods from Great Britain into Northern Ireland. Some have found new suppliers, others like BJ Sources have had to put up their prices as key ingredients suddenly became harder to get. Since the protocol uh, we've had major problem getting these products because they ha they're animal based and so they then need a veterinary certificate which means the, the vet has to be booked. He also then has to have a full pallet's worth of product uh, to certify. So have you had to charge customers more or have you had to make less money? Uh, yeah, but between the protocol and Ukraine hasn't helped. And so we've had to, we've probably had to raise prices in the last year 25%. Down the road in Stormont, unionist politicians are concerned by more than the disruption of trade. Traditional unionist voice is a party the DUP is wary of losing votes to. Their leader says sovereignty is still an issue. Is it a, a situation, as clearly it is, that we're still in a foreign single market for goods, still under a foreign customs code, still f subject to foreign law and still subject uh, to, to a foreign court? Other parties here value the protocol for the access it grants to the single market. They're more concerned about getting the Stormont Assembly up and running again. 
The people here have been left in limbo, they've left with uncertainty. I'm hoping that today, because we're at the end of the negotiation, the deal is now done. I'm hoping that today all energy and efforts focus at home here to um, making politics work and actually getting around the executive table. The effects of not having a Stormont Assembly are being felt. At Lisburn Food Bank, they want a government that can take action as the cost of living crisis bites harder and harder. This is people having to cut down on, will I eat tonight? You know, I can't afford to buy my child a new pair of school shoes even though they've grown out or there's holes in the bottom. It's every day very, very basic cuts that people are having to make. We're exhausted. We can't keep going and keep filling those holes where our government are meant to be the ones leading the way and supporting us in making those decisions. All these are the pressures bearing down on the DUP as they decide whether the Prime Minister's deal stacks up enough for them to go back into government in Stormont. Carlton in News at 10, Belfast.